I'm Jeremy and I'm a product specialist at Abstract. In this video, we're going to create this muddy wood planks material using material layering in Instamat Studio. Material layering projects make it easy to create beautiful and complex procedural materials using an artist-friendly layer-based workflow. Let's check it out. So here we are in Instamat Studio and the first thing I'm going to do is create a new project and choose material layering. And we're going to create a project without a template. And here we are presented with the material layering UI in Instamat Studio. In the middle, we have this big 3D viewport where we can visualize and interact with our material as we create it. On the right, we have our layer stack, and we also have these panels that we can use to manipulate the settings for each of our layers, masks, and effects. Now on the left, we have a few panels. We have the layering project editor, the package management, viewport settings, and the matte library panel. The matte library panel is where we can find all the materials, grunges, noises, and effects that are built into Instamat. So let's go ahead and go to the materials category. Now here we can find all the beautiful, high quality procedural materials that come built into Instamat Studio and Instamat's integrations. Each of these materials were created using nodes in Instamat's element graph, and we can tweak and adjust their dynamic parameters to control the various properties of each material, making them infinitely reusable in projects like the material layering project, which we're creating today. So let's first start off with a material found in the library. I'm just gonna go ahead and search for cabin. We need to find this cabin log wall new material. Now to add it to our project, we can simply drag and drop it into the viewport right in the center here, or we can drag it in the layer stack. But you can see the material now appears in our project and it appears as a layer in our layer stack. And so now we can start to customize this material's dynamic parameters using the layer element settings panel. So I'll just click on the layer. I'm in the layer element settings panel, and you can see we have all these settings and parameters that we can adjust to control the properties of this material. So in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to adjust the log type from rounded to square. And I'm also going to set the log orientation from horizontal to vertical. And this is one of the things I really like about Instamat's material library is that this material was initially designed to be a wall material, but now we're going to use it as wood planks for a floor. So now that we've gone ahead and adjusted the log type, I want to go to the dirt settings and just increase the dirt level here to get this nice grungy look to our planks. I'm also going to slightly increase the weathering here. And this is what makes material creation in Instamat really fun. We can just dial in these parameters to make a really nice looking material. I'm also going to increase the dust level. Go ahead and add just a bit of dust here, somewhere around maybe 61% looks good. And if I wanted to, I could change the amount of logs that we have. So I can increase this to something like 15, or if I want less logs, I can bring this down to something like six. And it's really powerful. We can expose this parameter later to make it possible to change the logs after we've built our material. In this case, what I'm going to do is just set this to the default of 10. So now what I'm going to do is add another material to our project. So I'm going to go back to the matte panel and I'm going to search for mud. And we've got a whole bunch of muddy materials here in the library. In this case, I'm going to use the excavated mud wet material. So just like before, I'm going to left click and drag and drop this into the center here. And you can see that the material, this uh, mud material naturally blends with our wood planks. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the, uh, the mud material layer here, and I'm going to go to the layer channels panel and under height, what I can do is I can change this blend offset. So if I increase the offset here, you can see that we can add more of that mud and control how much the, the mud is seeping through our planks like this. And so it's really easy to be able to control the blending of these materials just by adjusting this simple slider. Now, one of the things I'm noticing here is that we have some water built into this material, and I'm just going to turn that off for now. So I'm going to go back to the element settings here, the, uh, the layer element settings panel, and I'm going to go down to the water settings and just decrease the water level here. If we wanted to, we could add some more water and moisture to the material later on. Uh, but in this case, I want to remove it so that when we add it, we can combine the water with the rest of the material. 
Now, another thing that I'm noticing here is that the color of the mud makes it look like these are two separate materials that we've just kind of combined together. Now, what I could do is I could go to the primary color parameter here and adjust the color manually. But instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a filter called the color match filter. So I'm going to go to the buttons below the layer stack and I'm going to click the add filter button. And now I've got the color match filter in my favorites, but if you don't, I'm just going to go to pick from library and type in color match. You can see we have the color match filter here. I'll just double click it to add it to our layer. And now you can see that we're adjusting the color so that it matches the target color that we have set here. Now, instead of setting the color explicitly using this filter, I'm going to change the target mode from color to previous layer base color. Now, once I do that, what it's going to do is automatically change the color of this layer based on the color of the layer beneath it. So I can adjust the opacity here. And as I increase it, if you take a look at the, uh, the mud, as I increase the opacity, it's going to closer match the color of the layer underneath. So here's what we started with. And I'll go ahead and increase the opacity slightly. And now the mud looks much more cohesive uh, with the layer beneath it than it did before. In fact, I can enable and disable this so you can see the difference more clearly. So now we've naturally blended these two materials together. And that's how easy it is to do that in Instamat Studio. But next up, I'd like to add some additional dirt and soot. Now, instead of adding another dirt material from the library, which we can certainly do, I want to show you how we can use another layer type in our material layering project to create our own custom materials and effects. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the button here to add a new layer, and I'm going to add a new multi-channel layer. A multi-channel layer lets us assign different color values, textures, and even elements to each of the different channels of the layer. Now, in this case, what I want to do is I want to disable a few of these channels because we don't need them. So I'm going to disable the metalness and the ambient occlusion and the normal channel here, just setting them to off. And what I also want to do is change the height blend mode. Now, you'll notice this layer is behaving just like our, our mud and our logs are behaving, right? So if I increase the blend offset, it's going to push through and naturally blend with the materials, which looks really awesome. But in this case, I just want to be able to overlay this material on top of all of our other layers. So I'm going to change the blend mode from height blend to default. And so now for the color, I want to pick a very dark brown, like very dark. So I'm going to go to this value slider and adjust it to be very close to, to black. But in this case, I still want to have a little bit of color, a little bit of brown, reddish brown in there. And I'm going to decrease the saturation a little bit too. So we get a color that looks like this. Now to stay organized, I'm going to rename this layer. I'm going to call it dark soot. And I think I want to adjust the roughness a little bit. We can make it a little more rough because this is going to be some uh, soot, more like dirt. So I'll just increase the roughness a little bit. And I can hold shift and right click to rotate my lighting and see how my roughness looks. Now, I don't want this dark soot to appear everywhere on my material. So I need to apply a mask. So I'm going to go over to the Add Mask button here left click it. And you can see I have a bunch of masks to choose from for my favorites. In this case, I'm going to choose the mesh projected mask. Again, if you don't have it in your favorites, we can go to pick from library, I'll type in project, and we have the mesh projected mask here. And I'm just going to double click it to add it to this layer. So now you can see that this mask is projecting the Instamat icon onto the surface of our material. So if I go ahead and move this gizmo, we can change the projection, which is very cool. And you can see our mask is this icon here. And we can adjust the mask by choosing the image. Now, everywhere that is white on our mask is going to uh, shine through our other material. And everywhere that's black is where we're going to see our other materials. But you'll notice that our logo is being pressed into the surface. And this is because the height information for our dark soot is darker than the height information for the surrounding layers. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to the dark soot layer, back into the layer channels panel, and I'm going to adjust the height. Now, this is what's really cool is I could go ahead and increase the height information to add some kind of, uh, you know, raised surface like this. If I want to create a decal or some kind of uh, part of my material where we can adjust the height, this is what's really cool about this. I can create a mask and adjust the height information. But in this case, I don't want this layer to adjust the height in any way. So I'm going to decrease the percentage, the influence of this height channel on the dark soot layer all the way down to zero. So now we're just working with color information and also roughness information.
So now that our channels are set up, let's go ahead and change the image for this mask. So I'll go ahead and select my mesh projected mask, click on the image parameter. And now again, we have access to all of the images and grunges and noises built into Instamat Studio. And so I'm going to go ahead and find our grunge category. And the grunge that I want to find here is this Rampage 2. So if I double click that, you can now see that we have this very natural looking grunge applied to our dark soot layer. And we have this really nice organic spread and distribution of our dirt. Now, grunges in Instamat have dynamic parameters just like materials do. So what I could do is I can adjust the balance here to control how much of that, uh, that dirt and grime that we have accumulating on the material. So if I increase this, we can lessen this. And if I darken this, we can get some more. And if we want to see this in more detail, what I could do is go to my mesh projected mask, right click it and choose solo layer output in viewport. And so now we can see exactly what this mask is doing and I can go ahead and adjust the balance even further. So I can go ahead and press this S or I could press S on the keyboard and we can now again see what this looks like on our material. And I think this is looking pretty good. And at any time I can always go back and adjust these further. But now what I'd like to do is I'd like to add some slight color variation to the dirt because uh, dirt doesn't often have the same shade of dark brown. Instead, it has multiple variations in color. So let's create a set of multi-channel layers for each different color shade of our dirt. And so as we continue to work here, I'm just going to uh, adjust the size of this panel a little bit so that we can see this uh, material much more big on our screen. So let's go ahead and create a few multi-channel layers. I'm going to go ahead and create a new layer here, choose multi-channel layer, and I'm going to call this layer dark green. And I'm going to do the same thing I did for the dark soot. So I'm going to uh, hold, well, actually, here's a, here's a really cool tip. So if I hold Alt or Option and I just left click and drag on one of these sliders, it's going to control all the sliders for all the channels. So what I could do is just drag all these down to off, let go of Alt or Option, and then turn on the channels that I want, like base color and also roughness. And so I do need to go to the height channel and also change the blend mode to default so that we can now see it on top of everything. And so now I want to choose a dark green color. I still want this to be close to yellow, orange, red, but I do want to have this kind of dark feel and highly desaturated as well. Uh, I'm going to increase the roughness a bit. I think I could probably make this roughness at 100% in this case and just again make this quite dark but just have a little bit of that uh, that green flare to it. And so I'm going to right click on this to bring up the, uh, the larger color picker panel that we have and just so I can fine tune this a little bit more. Let's go ahead and desaturate, darken the value a little bit and that's looking pretty good. I can always adjust this later. Hit OK. And next up, I'm going to duplicate this layer so I can right click it and choose duplicate or hit command or control D and I'm going to call this dark red. I'm going to change this color to a, a dark red color so I can just right click and change the hue to be this sort of dark red color. Maybe I'll put it a little bit closer towards brown again, desaturate this and lower the value a little bit. And so now what I want to do is the same effect that we had for the dark soot. I want to add a mesh projected mask. So I'm just going to copy this mask or duplicate it. So I'll hit uh, duplicate again and just drag this onto the dark green. And uh, let me go ahead and just hide the dark red layer so that we can see what we're doing here. So now we have that dark green layer going on and uh, I can adjust this. So let me uh, click on the mask and change the seed and we can get a completely different variation of that grunge. So it's going to apply to a different portion of the surface of our material. And again, I can always go back and change the, uh, the value and the color of this green. So maybe let's darken this a bit and desaturate it. Uh, I think that's looking pretty good. And of course, if this is too intense, you know, we can go to the base color channel and just decrease the intensity of the base color here. And I think that looks a bit better. It blends in a lot more naturally. Let's go ahead and do the same thing for the dark red. So again, I'll duplicate this and uh, drag this up here. And I'll go ahead and change the seed for the mask. And again, I can make some adjustments. So I'll go ahead and uh, decrease the value a little bit and the saturation. I can always lighten it to see what that looks like. But I think in this case, I'm going to have it a bit more dark and lower that base color value here to closer to something like maybe 15%. I can always dial this in later. 
So now we've added that slight color variation, but I want to adjust this a little bit further. It still looks a little bit intense and it kind of looks like that color variation was splattered around the material. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to group these two layers together. So I can click this one, hold shift, and then I can go to the uh, add new layer group button. And this is going to group those two layers together. And I'm just going to call this dirt. And so what I can do is I can adjust the opacity of this entire group if I wanted to, or what I could do is apply a mask. And so I can apply masks to a group and all the layers underneath this group are going to be affected by that mask as well. And I can also do this with filters, which is pretty cool. Now, in this case, instead of using the mesh projected mask, what we're going to use is a mask called the mesh mask builder. And again, I have it in my favorites, but you can find it in the library. I'm just going to use the Mesh Mask Builder here. And the Mesh Mask Builder is really useful because we can use a lot of the different inputs from a layering project to influence and create really complex and powerful procedural masks in Instamat. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to this Layer Ambient Occlusion dropdown and increase this opacity to 1. Now, you might not see a difference or a change in here, but if I go ahead and again solo this, so right click and solo, what you can see is it's generating a mask based on the crevices and the contact shadows of the ambient occlusion information that's being generated dynamically in this material. So we actually don't have an ambient occlusion map generated from this mesh, but it's actually generating this ambient occlusion information from the height data of the materials that we're using in the stack, which is really cool. Now, instead of using the, uh, the shadow information of the ambient occlusion data, I want to invert this so that we can put the mask on the, uh, the non-occluded uh, sticking out parts of our material. So I can adjust the balance here and very quickly we can see that I can uh, refine this mask so that the dirt's just going to appear on the surfaces where the dirt is going to be applied. In this case on these flat uh, stuck out surfaces like this. So if I jump out of solo mode by pressing S, you can start to see that this looks a bit more natural. And I can again uh, adjust the balance so that we control how much of that we're seeing. Uh, but I think that's looking pretty good. Again, I can turn this on and off just by uh, disabling the visibility of the group itself. We can see this nicely added bit of detail that you might not notice right away, but I think you would definitely notice it if it, if it was missing, for example. So now that we've added this layer ambient occlusion, I want to break this up just a little bit further with a, a grunge mask. So we can apply multiple grunges and effects together and blend them in the mesh mask builder to create more complex masks. And so I'm going to uh, toggle down this grunge one option and increase the opacity. And for the image of the grunge that we want to use, I'm gonna press the pencil here and I'm gonna find a different grunge map. In this case, I think I'm gonna use the the dirt grunge, which looks pretty good. And again, I'm going to solo this. So I'm going to press S. We can see what we're doing here. If I uh, increase the opacity of this grunge, we're actually uh, breaking up the information that we have from this layer ambient occlusion. And uh, I can do that just by increasing this opacity slider. And this is going to make it look even more natural, I think, in my opinion. So let's go ahead and unsolo this. And now we can see that we have this really nice breakup and this, this nice color variation added. And I can toggle this on and off. So you can see the difference here. Nice and subtle, but a really nice touch added to the material. So next, the last layer that I'd like to add to our project is a thin layer of dust to our material. Now, adding dust is going to make the material feel more cohesive. And, and we're also going to apply a nice effect where we have some natural looking scuff marks across the surface. So let's go ahead and create that. So I'm just going to uh, toggle this so we can see more of our layer stack. And I'm going to create a new multi-channel layer and I'm going to call it dust. And so again, I'm going to hold alt or option and just uh, turn off all of my channels, but then just bring up the base color and also the roughness. And again, I'm going to set my blend mode for the height to default so we can see it on top of all of our layers here. And I'm going to choose a sort of lighter dark brown. So not as dark as the dark soot that we had, but still lighter so that this could still be dust. And I'm going to set the roughness to 100% rough here so that we can really get a feel for what this dust looks like. And we can definitely increase the value quite a bit uh, because this is a, a thin layer of dust that again is only going to show up on certain parts of our material. 
So now again, we need to add a mask to our dust. So I'll go to the add mask section here and I'm going to use that mesh mask builder again. And I'm going to do the same thing I did for the uh, different dirt color variations. So I'm going to go to that layer ambient occlusion section, increase the opacity, and I'm just going to uh, solo this by pressing S so we can see it clearly. And I'm going to invert this and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to adjust the, uh, the balance, just decrease this here so that the dust just settles and falls on the surfaces where it's exposed and the crevices and things like that, the dust isn't going to settle in this case. So I'm just going to lower this a little bit and I'm going to press S again so we can see what's going on. And now we can see that the dust has settled really naturally on the different surfaces of our wood and, and on the, uh, the other, you know, mushy dirt that we have seeping through the planks. So this is great. You know, we could break this up further with the grunge. And so I think that's exactly what we're going to do. I'm going to go to the grunge one section again, increase the opacity to one. And the image in this case is going to be a different grunge. I'm going to scroll down to the bottom and here's a great one. It's called swipes. So check this out. I'll double click it and you can see that we've added these natural looking swipes and scuffs to the surface where that dust has been disturbed. So I'm going to solo this again so we can see what's going on here. And I can, I can adjust this too, because again, our grunges have some dynamic parameters. So I can increase the count to add more swipes or, or decrease it here. Let's take a look at that on our material. So I'll just change the count. And based on the size of these planks, I think these scuffs are going to be quite large. So maybe we'll do a count of something like five or six in this case. We can also blur these a bit if we wanted to. But in this case, I'll, I'll keep the default of 0.3 here. And so now if this dust is a bit too much, of course, what we can do is we can go to the, uh, the dust layer and just decrease the intensity of the base color. So we can just fade this out a little bit naturally. And we have a nice natural looking layer of dust across the surface of our material. Now, the last thing I'd like to do is expose some of the dynamic parameters of this material so that when we use it in other Instamat projects or with Instamat's integrations, we can dynamically adjust some of its properties. So firstly, I'm going to go to the excavated mud wet material and I'm going to go to the element settings here. And what I want to do is be able to adjust this property called additional mud layer. You'll notice if I bring this down, it decreases the amount of dirt that we have and or the mud rather, if I increase it, we've got a lot more. So I want to be able to adjust this dynamically anytime I'd like. So what I'm going to do is right click on the parameter and choose expose as input parameter. Now, if we go to the layering project editor panel, you can see down here that we have this parameter section and we have that additional mud layer parameter exposed. Now that's great. I can be able to adjust this later on. Uh, now I'm also going to go down to the cabin log wall material and I want to expose the log count. So I'll right click this, choose expose as input parameter, and you can see it's been added to the list of exposed parameters. So I'm just going to go and give this uh, material a name. So I'm going to call it, let's see, muddy wood planks. Go ahead and save that. And so I've just gone and quickly created an element graph here. You can go to the plus button and choose a new element graph. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag our Muddy Wood Planks project into the canvas here, into the graph area. And now you can see that our material has been created here as a node. I can right click it and choose preview as 3D material. And we can now see our newly created material here. So if I wanted to, I can adjust some of those parameters so I can click on the muddy wood planks and I can adjust this. So I can go ahead and say, uh, let's increase the amount of uh, mud that we want. And let's also uh, change the log count, right? So I'm going to go and say, maybe we want a lot more logs. So I'll just increase this to something like 16. It quickly processes and we can see that we have more of those planks. I can bring this down to something like uh, six and you can see they get a lot bigger and we have less planks. And so you can see how we can use Instamass material layering project type to create complex procedural materials and also give the material some dynamic functionality by exposing some of those parameters. Thanks for watching this video on creating a muddy wood planks material using material layering in Instamat Studio. Instamat makes it possible to create materials, texture assets, and build scalable asset creation workflows with its various project types like the element graph, which we took a brief look at at the end of this video. If you'd like to learn more about the different project types in Instamat Studio, subscribe to our YouTube channel.
Here we have an ever-expanding library of videos covering the ins and outs of Instamat. Well, that's it for now. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video. If you enjoyed this video, drop us a comment below and don't forget to subscribe. For the latest news about Instamat, please visit our website and follow us on Twitter. You can find all the links in the video description below. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you in the next one.